Hello, Oscillator Sync here. This friend towards the centre of my case is the pizza from Bastel. It's Bastel's first digital VCO for Eurorack, and I guess you'd probably characterise it as a complex oscillator because it combines uh, FM and ring modulation and wave folding and variable wave shapes to give you access to a really wide range of tones and timbres. It is a surprisingly flexible uh, VCO considering its size. It packs a lot into the small number of HP that it takes up. And the functionality that it provides has actually just grown because Bastel have just released version 1.1 of Pizza's firmware, which has added some new features and improved stability and the sound of the module. So Bastel um, contacted me and asked whether I would like to do a video on the new firmware for Pizza. And if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you may well be aware that FM is kind of one of my favorite things in the world ever. So I was really excited to do that. My goal for this video is to provide a comprehensive kind of video manual for all of the features because as I say it packs a lot into a small HP and then to uh, conclude the video with a bunch of example patches with uh, pizza kind of in a wider context. To give you a flavour for what might be coming up here are some of the sounds in those demos. I hope that's whetted your appetite. Um, in the interest of transparency, before we get going with the video proper, uh, Bastel sent this module to me for free. Um, they have not asked for, neither have they been given any editorial oversight into the uh, content of this video. And uh, I haven't received any payment otherwise for making this video. Right, let's talk about pizza. The difficulty with making a video about a module like pizza, which can be approached in so many different ways, is working out even where to start, because depending on what you're trying to achieve, that's going to change where you're going to start with your patching. But I think probably it's safe to say that the kind of headline feature of pizza is the fact that it's based around an FM synthesis course. So let's start by talking about all of the FM stuff. The FM synthesis core, or actually, phase modulation synthesis, but that's what the DX7 uses. So that's probably what you're thinking when you're thinking of FM. Of Pizza is essentially a two operator 
affair. You have a carrier, the thing that you hear, and a modulator, which wiggles the carrier around at audio rate to generate all of those additional harmonics and sidebands that we know and love in FM synthesis. But Pizza actually is a slightly more versatile um, architecture because there are actually two modulators uh, which have different capabilities and can be set up in different ways and which one of those is modulating our carrier depends on the FM index control. So essentially in the center point, neither of them are doing any modulation. Uh, the ratio oscillator is doing the modulation if we go negative and the uh, octave oscillator is doing the modulation if you go positive. Uh, we can control this using this slider. Um, we can also uh, see it using the index input here. And then we have an attenuverter for that input, which is going to apply the CV uh, to where the slider currently is. So that will start as an offset and then we'll be modulating from that offset point. Hello, Oscillator Sync from the editing bay here. Um, just a quick addendum on what I just said. Um, Pizza is a two-op FM synth under normal operation. However, in version 1.1 of the firmware that's just been released, there is a feature that allows you to turn it essentially into a three-op FM synth, running both modulators in parallel into the uh, single carrier. Uh, we will get to that when we talk about the assignable controllers. So here I have the main output plugged into Quadrat, which I'm just using as a mixer. And if we turn it up without any FM applied, anyone familiar with FM will be probably unsurprised to hear that we have a sine wave. And it is a rather nice sine wave. I know sine waves should be mathematically pure. Strictly speaking, it should be boring. But actually, if we um, turn up the octaves, and we'll come back to this knob because it does a bunch of different things depending on how you're currently set. You can kind of hear in these higher ranges, there's a slight digital sort of fluff and rustle and character to the waveform. Which is quite a human sounding sine wave. And I have to admit that a couple of nights ago, I spent quite a long time with just the um, pure sine wave, pure sine wave going into a reverb being sequenced and it was a lovely time. It's a nice sounding sine wave. But uh, if we want to hear some FM, we'll have to apply some of the index. And as I say, depending on whether we go negative or positive from the center point, it's the one of the two different uh, modulators that we're hearing. So one of the modulators going this way. <laughs> Uh, and then going the other way, we're going to be hearing the, uh, in this case, the octave oscillator. Good stuff. So um, let's talk about um, what these two oscillators can do, because they can be set up to do um, sort of different jobs if you like. Let's start by talking about the octave oscillator first because it's the easier one to kind of uh, talk about. And in FM, um, it's all about the relationship between our carrier and our modulator. That's how we sort of define what sort of timbre we're gonna be hearing. And the octave oscillator ha always has one of the most simple relationships uh, between the carrier and the modulator, which is going to be set either at the same uh, frequency or a number of octaves above or below. So here we have just one light turned on and that tells us that we are at uh, the same frequency as our carrier. Press it again, both lights come up. Now we are one octave above, essentially a two to one ratio in FM talk. And that's one of the places that we can hear that sort of pseudo square wave kind of hollow sound. Great one for, for basses. Um, press it again. We're now going to be two octaves above. So a 
little bit more on the top end there but lower indexes still nice and easy to kind of understand a little less integrated because we've moved a little bit further away and if we um, press it one more time and all the lights off now we are at one octave below the um, carrier so a one to two relationship or, or a one or a uh, 0.5 to 1 relationship we get one of those nice growly lower harmonics coming in getting really good for basses quite vocal at places as well so in FM it's all about the relationship between the um the carrier and the modulator and because we're only dealing with octaves here which are the most basic um, easy to understand relationships these uh, settings are pretty much always going to be um, easy for the ear to understand and uh, make sense harmonically there's not going to get too much sort of clangy um, glassy metallic overtones unless you push the uh, index really high and you start to get some of those digital sidebands making their way in there it's probably worth, uh, at this point, just talking about one of the uh, functionalities on the pitch knob, which is, uh, if we touch that button there, um, we have a detune. Now, if I don't have any FM happening, so I have that in the middle, and I turn the detune knob, you will hear nothing happening. And that's because the detune knob is not going to be detuning the carrier, it's going to be detuning our two modulators and what that will do is as we move away from that really simple relationship uh, just sorry <laughs> I should be able to hear it let's go to one to one as we move away from that really simple relationship the tones are going to animate as uh, the frequencies don't quite line up anymore and you get a sort of a chorusing and a beating at lower amounts it further and the relationship starts to get complex we start to get those, some of those belly overtones that we would expect from FM so the interesting thing about the detune knob here is that depending on whether you go positive or negative it does actually do something slightly different obviously you can hear if we go positive it detunes up and if we go negative it detunes down but the detuning relationship uh, between the carrier and the modulator actually is different depending on which way you go. If we detune, um, we'll go to the right first, we're getting exponential um, detuning. What I want you to pay attention to is the beating between the, relation, uh, the uh, frequencies here. wobbling so with exponential uh, detuning as we move away from the current pitch can you hear that the beating between the frequencies is essentially the, the frequency of that beating is halving as we go down the octaves whoa, 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 whoa. Much faster, so fast that you can't really determine that that movement anymore. And then we start to get side bands at the top there. Uh, if we detune the other way, hear that beating? This is linear detuning. And now, if we move around the octaves the relationship with the beating should stay the same. Whoa, 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 hear that. So as we move across the different octaves, that movement stays the same. And that's a really useful thing to know because depending on the type of patch that you're creating that sort of um, movement that's happening in the beating there you're probably going to want to stay fairly uh, stable if for example you're making like a big droney bass you kind of want that sound to keep going 
that movement to be consistent. Whereas if you're trying to create like a bell sound or something like that, uh, you'll probably want it to move around and, and create interest as you move across the different notes. So that's a really nice little feature that we have there um, to have that uh, different option. It's a nicely thought out uh, idea. Okay, so let's go the other way and talk about the ratio oscillator. So if we bring this negative, we'll be hearing the ratio oscillator instead. And what we have here, rather than just octaves, are preset, four preset ratios, relationships between the carrier and the modulator. Now, if you want, these can be octaves, uh, but we can set them to different things. So at the moment, um, we can cycle through them by pressing this button, we can hear them. We're getting different sounds. These are generally more complex, although I think that one is the same as, uh, yeah, that's just a one-to-one -one relationship there. So we have access to four different sounds that can be set to different kinds of relationships. Now, um, these are preset ones, actually I might have messed with one of them, but we can set each of these four slots to whatever we want. Um, and that gives you a whole range of tones that you can have at your fingertips. And, spoiler alert, you can modulate which one is currently active, which is pretty cool as well. Hello, Oscillate Sync from the future here, and I apologize for what I assume was a sudden jump cut. Uh, when I came to editing this part of the video, I realized that I didn't explain it as clearly as I would have liked. So if you don't mind, I'm going to give it another go now, and I'm going to start with a paper exercise. When we're considering the parameters which are going to affect the, the uh, tone of an FM synth, there are kind of three main things that we can think about. The first is how much FM we're doing, the depth of the FM, the amplitude of the modulator. Um, and on the pizza, we call this the FM index. So we have the FM index, which is kind of the depth or amplitude of the modulator. Um, the more FM in index you're going to apply, the um, the brighter, more modulated the sound is going to be. The next thing that is going to affect the tone of our FM is the um, harmonic content or complexity of the um, wave shape that our modulator has. And also our carrier to be fair um, but on the pizza we can modulate uh, or alter spoilers the uh, shape of our two modulators uh, via the uh, shape control which we will be getting to shortly the final thing that is going to affect the tone of our fm synth is the frequency relationship between the uh, carrier and the modulator and um, that's what we refer to as the ratio. Now we've actually already talked about the relationship between the frequencies of the modulator and the carrier when we talked about our octave oscillator. In our octave oscillator we had four different octaves with respect to the carrier that we could uh, select. The first one was where the uh, octave oscillator was in the same octave as the carrier, essentially the frequency of the modulator and the frequency of the carrier are the same. And we would call that a one-to-one -one ratio. So if you raise uh, the frequency of the modulator by some number of hertz, you're going to do the same with the carrier. The next one that we had was uh, an octave above the carrier. When we raise the uh, pitch of a tone by um, one octave, what we're actually doing is we're doubling the frequency. So uh, if you have uh, 440 being uh, A, if you want to get the octave above that, you would go to 880, you would double the frequency. So in terms of uh, the frequency ratios, we would call that a uh, two to one ratio where the modulator is going to be uh, have a frequency of twice of what the carrier has. The next octave that we had then uh, was um, two octaves above. And if we think about two octaves above, that's going to be uh, an octave above, one octave above, right? So um, to get a ratio for uh, two octaves above, we need to take our one octave above and double that. So uh, what we uh, see with um, two octaves above is a frequency ratio of four to one. Now we've skipped over uh, three to one here, but obviously that is a 
relationship that you could have. Uh, and actually, um, three to one, uh, as it happens, will be uh, an, an octave plus a fifth uh, above the uh, carrier in that case. So you can see that we actually have some sort of meaningful musical intervals here, not just our octaves when we're thinking about these ratios. And indeed, uh, we can go up from, from here um, to uh, five to one, which will be a major third above that. Um, so uh, two octaves plus uh, a third. Actually, it's not quite a third, it's uh, just flat, I think, but it's, it's more or less a third. Um, uh, if we go to uh, six to one, um, we don't really need to think about this too much. It's going to be uh, an octave above uh, this one because it's doubling this value here. So whenever we double the ratio, we're going to go up by an octave. So this is going to be uh, two octaves uh, plus a fifth. Um, as it happens, uh, seven to one is going to be, um, it's kind of a minor seventh, but it's actually quite flat, I think. Um, oh, plus two octaves. Uh, and um, when we get to eight to one, as you can probably imagine, not that we have this as an option on our octave uh, oscillator, but uh, eight is twice four. So if that's two octaves, this is going to be three octaves because we've doubled it again. That's one octave and that's uh, the same. Now these whole number um, ratios of frequencies have a, a name and what we have formed here is the harmonic series. Uh, and generally speaking in FM, especially for lower numbers, lower whole numbers, um, when you have frequency ratio set up this way, the sounds are going to be pretty um, consonant, they're going to be fairly harmonious, they're going to feel quite sort of together uh, and stable. Uh, so whenever you're doing FM and you want to have something that sort of um, works well, depending on what you mean by well, generally speaking, these whole numbers are going to be um, pretty useful to you. So we have these nice, pleasant sounding ratios. When we detune our, um, our modulators, what we're actually doing is creating a really, really complex ratio. Like it might be 1.001 to one if we detune the same octave just out by a little bit. And actually, um, when you uh, are, are creating these more complex uh, ratios, that's where the sort of atonalities start to come into FM. When we detune it a little bit, we tend to just hear it exhibited as that kind of chorusing and beating and movement within the FM that's really, really gorgeous. But if we move to, uh, say, uh, 2.3 to 1, that's a pretty complex uh, relationship. And that's where we're going to get some pretty um, wild, atonal, clangy kind of sounds with our FM. So how does this all tie into the custom ratios on pizza? Well, uh, what that allows us to do is express this left-hand side of our ratio as a fraction, essentially. Now, these ones here are already uh, straightforward. Uh, we can think of that as one over one to one. This is going to be two over one to one, three over one to one, and four over one to one. But say um, we wanted to get a... Um, a ratio in our operators, which rather than being one octave and a fifth up, was just a fifth up. So um, what would we do? Well, uh, to go up an octave, we would uh, double it. So it would be three to one. If we want to come down an octave, we need to half it, just go in the other direction. And how do we express uh, half of this? Um, well, we just stick a two at the bottom of our fraction instead. So if we did um, three, over two to one, that's just a fifth above instead. Um, if we wanted to uh, do uh, uh, an octave down, so uh, that's the final um, thing on the octave uh, oscillator that I didn't mention. Uh, well, an octave down is going to be half what this is, so that'll be one over uh, two would be, um, to one is going to be an octave down. And if we wanted to do uh, 2.3 to 1 as a um, 
as a ratio, we'd have to find a nice way to express uh, that. So uh, what's the common denominator there? Quickly, let's do some maths. So we could do this as 23 over 10 is probably the simplest way of doing it, but uh, the pizza doesn't go up to 23. So you'd probably do it as uh, 11 over 5 plus some D tune uh, in this case. Um, but uh, a lot of other uh, ratios could be expressed uh, more accurately without having to do the D tune. Right, let's move over to the module then. In order to set our custom ratios, what we need to do is press and hold the ratio oscillator button until it starts uh, flashing. Now, uh, depending on the combination of lights that are flashing, we can be setting one of the four different uh, ratios here. So at the moment you can see that it's flashing, but the flash is very brief and it's off for most of the time. And that is the setting um, where the uh, ratio oscillator lights are off. So that's your first setting. If we press it again, the bottom um, light is flashing. So we're gonna be setting the, the bottom one. If we press it again, um, both are flashing again, but it's on more than it's off. So it's, the, the off is very brief. So that's the setting where both of them are on. And then uh, obviously that one at the top is where uh, just the uh, top light is on. So we'll just go to the one where they are both off to begin with. So as I said uh, previously, the way that we set our ratios on pizza is by thinking about um, the left part of our ratio and expressing it as a fraction. Um, so uh, we're going to use the pitch knob to do that, the most used knob on pizza. And uh, we need to pay attention to uh, which light is flashing here when we press the uh, pitch button. And basically, when the top light, the octave light is flashing, we're going to be adjusting the top part of the fraction and uh, uh, the, the, the numerator. And then when the bottom light is flashing, the detune light, we're going to be doing the bottom part of the fraction, the denominator. So, let's turn up uh, this here, which will allow us to hear our ratio oscillator. There it is. And I'm going to start by setting um, everything to a standard sort of one-to-one -one, um, ratio. So if we listen to our main output, we can hear that that's not the same frequency. Uh, so uh, to do that, we'll just take the um, uh, pitch knob on each of the uh, numerator and the denominator, top half and bottom half of our fraction, and just turn it down. And now you should hear it's at the same um, frequency. Good stuff. So um, if I wanted uh, to take this to a, a, a two to one or a two over one uh, ratio, we'll just need to turn up the pitch knob. And what you'll notice is as I turn the knob, uh, the tune light will flash. And each time the tune knob flashes, we've gone up by a number. So if I want to go uh, two to one, at the moment we're on one to one, I've got one at the bottom. If I want to go to two to one, I want to turn up the pitch knob and watch for the first flash. There we go, that's our uh, two to one relationship. If I go up again and watch for another flash, that's going to be three, so that's going to be a fifth above. We can get chord tones there. So we'll just listen to the main output. Um, up again, that's going to be four to one. So that's our two octaves above. There's our major third, or just intonated major third. Octave and a fifth, so that's our six to one. There's our seven to one, which is kind of a flat minus seventh. There's our eight to one, which is going to be our um, uh, two. Uh, three octaves above. So if you set the um, bottom half of our fraction to one and you just turn up the top half, what we get is that harmonic series. Which is quite a nice sound anyway. And if we hear that um, actually modulating our carrier, we get that classic sort of FM ratio selector sound. And as I mentioned, all of these pretty much kind of sound fine. Like 
none of them are particularly angry sounding. Now, of course, we could go down and have subharmonics as well. So uh, the way that we um, could do this um, is instead of, let me just bring this back up, instead of turning up the um, top half of the fraction, if we turn up the bottom half, uh, we're going to be halving the frequency first. Then we go down by, by an octave. Uh, Let's turn, hang on, let's turn up the octave of the actual oscillator if we're going to do that. Um, yeah, so octave below, two octaves below, three octaves below. So those are our, our subharmonics, which also sound pretty good if we uh, give it a bit of modulation. But we do hear a lot more of the frequency that we've got it set to in there. It's a really nice sort of glottal, almost formant sounds that you get with your subharmonics. Cool. Um, so um, to do more complex things, so for example, if we wanted to get our um, fifth above, uh, set that to one to begin with. There's our octave in a fifth above. And if we watch for one light here, that's going to be three over two, taking it down an octave there. And if we want to create more complex things, uh, I think I mentioned 11 over five or something like that, uh, we can uh, do that as well. So start at one to one, generally speaking is easier. And we wanna go one, two, three, four, let's turn it down, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then on the bottom, two, three, four, five. And we should have a pretty interesting ringing metallic kind of sound there. Because that's a more complex relationship. sounds. If you're just looking for um, interesting consonant sounds and you want the best sort of range on here, my advice actually, um, if you're looking to go up and down, is to start at 8 to 8, which is still, oh sorry, 8 over 8, which is still 1, uh, and then you've got a good range either way. So if we go uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's pretty interesting sounds on the way over there. And now going either way on the uh, top half, we've got a good range up and down of nice consonant sounds. So perhaps we want that sound there. And then we can save that, go to the next one and set something else up. the next one and set something else up. Now we have a bunch of interesting uh, ratios set up there that we can make use of. Now you can get pretty much um, more or less every uh, chromatic note out of this way of, of dealing with your uh, ratios. Um, 
and in the manual uh, they are uh, all listed for you for your convenience. Um, it's worth noting that these notes won't be exactly even tempered um, notes. You'll get um, a kind of a just intonation instead which means that the um, relationship between them will work really well for the root note of everything but will sound kind of a bit weird if you move away from that root note but yeah um, as a spoiler alert this can be modulated so we can create um, some interesting uh, sort of arpeggiated kind of things you know if you do set it up as a sequence of notes that you're interested in you can then use that as a four-step sequencer essentially um, on top of what's going on in the uh, the main sequence but bear in mind these will still be related to whatever the volts per octave is going to be coming in to tune the oscillator itself so if you choose like octaves and fifths on here you can get really sort of consonant sounds for most sort of um, sequences that you're going to put in but yeah it's uh a pretty flexible way of working with the different ratios and remember you can still detune to get other uh, sort of in between places and uh, spoiler alert we can also sort of independently tune both of these uh, modulator oscillators um, by making use of the assignable control which we'll get to in a little while we should probably talk about the pitch knob a little bit since we've used it a fair bit. Uh, it's probably the most multifunction knob on the whole of the module. Um, but before we do talk about pitch, we should probably just mention, um, in terms of tuning, pizza is self-calibrating. If you want it to be uh, perfectly in tune every time, there's a calibration routine that you need to run once, or possibly not even once, um, if you've got a fairly standard power supply. And once that calibration routine is run, as long as the power supply situation in your case doesn't change massively, it should stay in tune forever, essentially. Um, if the power supply situation in your case does change, there'll be a sequence of lights which will be shown on pizza when you turn it on, basically saying uh, it's lost calibration and to run the calibration routine again. Uh, that's all explained in the manual. It takes literally seconds to do. Um, so uh, that's all really good news. So, what can we do with the pitch knob? So, uh, let's hear what we're hearing again. So, the mode of the pitch knob is determined by um, presses on this button to the right of it. So, at the moment, I am in um, uh, octave mode, and if I turn the pitch knob, it's going to move the pitch of the whole module by octaves. If we press it again and go into detune mode, uh, if we're hearing no FM, we hear nothing, but if we're hearing a little bit of FM, we can detune both of our modulators. We've also seen how um, when we are setting up the ratios uh, for our ratio oscillator, we use the pitch knob, again, in conjunction with uh, these two lights here for the uh, nominator, uh, for the numerator and the denominator. So there are a couple of other things that we can do with this uh, knob. So the first thing is if we long press for two seconds, our tuning uh, light is going to show up here. and. Um, you can see that the octave light is now pulsing and when uh, the octave light is pulsing we are now able to change the tuning in semitones like so and down of course so if you just need to offset this particular oscillator by a number of semitones compared to another oscillator, perhaps you're doing a multi-voice, uh, sorry, multi-oscillator synth voice, uh, that's pretty easy to do and it's nice and stepped so you don't have to um, do it exactly right. But if you do want to do fine tuning, if we press it one more time and the detune um, pulses, now we are fine tuning the whole uh, oscillator. And that goes up and down by a semitone smoothly. 
So if you have a situation where you are running two oscillators and you want to detune one from the other slightly, you can still achieve that. Notice that's different to the detuning. Um, that's This is now fine tuning the entire module, so the carrier and the modulators, not just the modulators. So even if I turn off our FM, you'll still hear that tuning difference, like so. The final mode that you have on the pitch knob, uh, which is um, new in version 1.1, is if you long hold for seven seconds, and everything is now lit. Now we have the ability to tune across a very wide range of semitones. So it's still stepped. So it's still going to be in tune every time. but a much wider range than you have access to. Hello, Oscillator Sync from the future here. Just a quick errata and addendum here. Um, what I just said about uh, the coarse tuning mode being quantized is not true in the release version of the firmware. I'm running a slightly older version of the firmware, so there's a little bit of stepping here, but in the release version that is now available, uh, it is completely um, smooth, free tuning, not quantized and not stepped. Back to the video. So this kind of combines um, the uh, semitone transposition and the octave. You've got a similar sort of range there. Uh, to leave this again, you just press it and hold, and now we're back to normal. And when we come out of that mode, it doesn't maintain that tuning that we just had. Um, so if we go back in here, uh, what we lose is access to the detune. So if you want to use this mode, you'll need to set your detune first. Like so. Okay, let's talk outputs. So far we've only been listening to the main output, but I've just patched in um, the other two outputs to my mixer. So on channel one I have the main output, which is what we've been listening to so far. Channel two I have plugged in the octave oscillator output. So this will be what the octave oscillator sounds like. So it's not going to be affected by any of our FM because uh, it's just the uh, oscillator itself, but it will be affected by detune because the detune detunes the modulators and of course the octave as well. And we can choose what octave we're dealing with here on our button here. So uh, a really obvious use for this would be if we were choosing one of our more aggressive ratio oscillator types here, which is going to rob us of our bottom end, we can mix that octave oscillator back in as a sub oscillator. The final output here is the pulse output. And the pulse output is going to be a uh, pulse wave, a square wave, um, which is um, based on the uh, the carrier, unaffected by the FM. So you don't hear any FM on the pulse output. Uh, but what you get instead with the FM index is pulse width modulation. Nick Bat, you are welcome. Now, since version 1.1, uh, we can actually set the pulse output to do something else. And that is, rather than being this pulse wave, instead we can hear the ratio oscillator instead. And personally, this is how I like to have it set up. So to do this is really straightforward, uh, but it is a button combination on power-up, so I'm just going to have to power off my case for a second.
And if I hold down the uh, ratio and octave buttons on power up, it will switch it to the other mode. And if you want to switch it back, exactly the same thing. So hold these down, power it on. And now if we turn up the pulse output, we're no longer hearing that square wave, but if we change our ratio oscillator uh, ratio, you can hear that we're hearing that instead. And again, in the same way as we have with the um, octave oscillator, that's going to be affected by detune. So that means that we can kind of build up chords. carefully, you could have it essentially arpeggiate. As I mentioned, this can be modulated, which we'll get to uh, shortly. So if you're anything like me, this entire time where we've been looking at the functionality so far, this inviting looking slider here would have been incredibly tempting uh, to you. So. Um, this again is a multifunction slider and its functionality depends on the setting of this button just here. Let's start with um, wave and wave allows us to apply different wave shapes to our modulators. So if I turn up the uh, main output here and turn off all of my FM, if I move this slider when it's in wave mode, we'll hear nothing happening because unless we are um, applying the uh, modulators to the carrier in some way, we're not going to hear any difference here because it's only the modulators which are changing shape. If we give ourselves a little bit of FM here, we'll be able to hear what's going on. An easier way to hear what's going on, however, is to grab our oscillator output here. So there's our oscillator output and uh, going uh, to the left from the center point, so negative, we're going to move from a sine wave into a square wave. And going the other way, we're going to get to a sawtooth wave and that's also going to be happening on the ratio. So I've got my ratio output there as well. As I mentioned, if you chose your um, tunings carefully here, so maybe let's do um, a So if you wanted to get kind of conventional subtractive sounds, we could take that output and go into a filter instead. Probably want to turn it down a bit so it doesn't overdrive it. Um, let me come out the low pass, go into my output here. And you can, of course, uh, modulate that wave shape as well. 
You can modulate whichever one you currently have selected, in fact, um, by modulating the shape uh, input here. So if I uh, just create an LFO here, and I'll go uh, bipolar, there we go, and plumb that uh, fire attenuator perhaps. Unfortunately, uh, as it currently stands, um, anything that comes in here is going to be applied to the offset of shape. So if you want to go from sine to uh, sawtooth, you're going to need to bring it up into the middle and just adjust your attenuator appropriately. Uh, and if you want to go down into, into the square wave again, you're going to have to probably set it in the middle. And set things appropriately again. If you go too high, you're probably going to end up in sawtooth. Now you can also set it up to um, control this with the external control, which is bipolar, which gives you a little bit more control maybe. Um, nevertheless, cool sounds. Now of course, um, having different wave shapes uh, in FM is going to uh, massively change the sound of your uh, FM as well. So if I come back to my main output here, and we're just with the octave. <laughs> oscillator here and I change the shape of that oscillator we get very different timbres in there very different timbres in there as well and because this is incremental uh, and able to be CV'd this kind of sounds a bit like having an operator sat above this operator in a uh, in an FM algorithm because with a simple relationship at least that's a bit like a one-to-one -one sat above it and that's a bit like a two-to-one sat above it so that's a nice way of approximating a three operator stack for basic things at, at least Right, on to the next two modes for the shape fader. Um, unlike um, with the wave shaping, uh, which is applied to our modulators, these next two are applied to our carrier only. So you're only going to hear the impact of them on the main output. So let's just turn that back up. And there's our sine wave. We've got no FM going on for the moment. And we'll move on to the second mode here, which is wave folding. I love a wave folder. Um, in the middle, we're hearing no wave folding, as you would probably expect. Going negative and positive will give us two different flavors of wave folding. So if we go uh, negative to the left, we're going to hear something which is inspired by um, the Buchler way of doing wave folding. Lovely. Harsh overtones that would love to be dampened down with a low pass gate. Perhaps we'll have a look at that in a little while in some of the patch examples. Going to the right or positive on CV, we're going to get a digital wave folder instead, which has a really quite different um, feel to it. You can kind of hear there. Let's say 
the digital multi-stage folder and what we're getting is a much cleaner walk through the harmonics. So a very different kind of feel there. And of course, if we are FMing our carrier first, we're going to be FMing it and then wave folding it, which is going to give us, again, more intense uh, results. I feel like the uh, Buchla version to the left gives you more of a kind of a vocal sound once you've started to get a bit more complexity. Like talking computer kind of things. Where the digital wave folder, although obviously it's a little bit harsher, still kind of feels controlled in terms of its harshness. It's still doing what it was doing before, just with more harmonics there in the first place, really. The final mode that we have on the shape control here is a ring modulator. And I just said I love me a, um, a wave folder, I love me a ring modulator as well. So turning our main output back up. In ring modulator mode, the shape control basically works the same way as the FM index, in that if we go uh, to the right, we are going to be ring modulating our carrier with our octave oscillator. So ring mod gets you those additional harmonics, but in a less of a harsh kind of way. And going to the left is going to give us our ratio oscillator instead. So again, uh, these are going to be changed by what we have set uh, in terms of the ratio that we're using. And again, ring modulator is a kind of a kind of more gentle modulation. That's FM happening to that. Ring modulator, at least on this slider, never really gets really out of control. So it's, if you want to get these sort of ringing overtones, that could be a nice way of doing it. And of course, the nice thing about having the ring modulator here is that we are now able to ring modulate using one signal and then FM it using another. which begins to give us that parallel um, modulation, uh, that kind of two modulators into one carrier kind of sound, which is kind of the key to getting more sort of complex bell-like tones. And you can do a little bit of both and for drones and stuff, just gently modulating these two things. Let's do it. Let's gently modulate those two things. have set here is only one of these things at a time. Um, however, you can externally control um, one mode using uh, the control 
input while still modulating the shape separately. So you can have two of these different modes under control at the same time. So if you want folding and ring modulator to get kind of a boucle feel going on, that is possible uh, by making sure that you're using the control into uh, the shape. And I guess that's probably a pretty good segue to talk about the control. The assignable control feature on Pizza allows us CV control over any control that we have access to on the surface of the module and some other things that we can't otherwise get at um, via the knobs and sliders under normal operation. In order to choose which parameters being controlled by control, what we do is we press and hold this button here until things start flashing and then by pressing the buttons or combinations of buttons on the control surface, we can assign one of a bunch of different um, destinations for the modulation. Once we've assigned that, uh, we can long press uh, to come back out of the assign mode. And now what we have is a situation where this control knob acts as an attenuverter to uh, the incoming CV on the control input. However, what's quite useful is that when you don't have anything plugged into the control input, um, there is a voltage that's normaled to that input. So um, as it happens, I've just uh, assigned control to the um, essentially the pitch of the oscillator. So without anything plugged in, you get hands-on control of whatever you have assigned. Um, so we're going to go through every single destination here, explain what they do, and we'll try them with uh, manual control or CV control, depending on what kind of makes most sense to demo them. Okay, there's a few of them, so strap in. Let's go. Right, press and hold to assign, and we'll start up at the top uh, with the first item here, which is octave. So um, this gives us control over the octave selector um, down here but obviously more interestingly it does allow us to do CV control so if I just give Peter a little sequence oh, use the right output would be good so we've got an, a little sequence going on there uh, and if I now take a, a synced LFO and bring that into the control input and turn up our attenuverter, we'll get um, tempo synced shifting octaves. To bring some other interest into our sequence. Which is certainly one uh, way that you can approach using it. To create variations of sequences. I quite like that. So the next um, one here is going to be detunes. This is going to give us CV control of the detune parameter, which obviously is going to sound pretty nice under uh, CV control to get some additional movement into a patch, potentially. but I'm just going to skip this one first. Let's uh, come to this one first with both of the lights flashing. So this is going to give us um, exponential FM, which essentially allows us to tune the whole oscillator um, using the control. This is also uh, where if you want to do uh, vibrato, this will be probably the, the place to do it. So if we want to get a faster... that's exponential FM. Uh, the reason I skipped over tune is that this is another bit of FM. So this is the linear FM. Now, when we think of linear FM in uh, synthesis, uh, usually we kind of think of it as the more stable FM. If we want to try and do FM synthesis on an analog synth, we usually hope that it's got linear FM for that because it tends to be a little bit more uh, stable. So um, 
yeah, that's certainly one thing we can do if we take a audio rate uh, input here from uh, the 2HP here and we can get some interesting FM tones there and if we sequence these two together things will stay sort of fairly together so if I take uh, my pitch sequence here malt it and if we send that pitch sequence to both the pizza uh, and the VCO things kind of sound like they're staying more or less together. The key thing to note here is that I'm not doing um, any um, FM inside the synth. I'm just, uh, we're just hearing the uh, pure sound coming out of the main output without any uh, real FM going on in there. Well, there was a little bit actually, but not much. But the interesting thing um, with the um, linear FM is the way that it affects um, the relationship between the uh, different operators because with exponential FM if I send a, um, a signal where I expect the octave to jump uh, by one I'm going to be doubling the frequency uh, and if my modulators are set to a different frequency they also need to be doubled with linear, if I send in a, a, a signal which is going to raise the the frequency of the oscillator by uh, another frequency, so I'm going to raise it by uh, 20 hertz, um, that's going to be applied no matter what the different oscillators are set at, which means that they're actually going to deviate from their musical pitch. Let me show you. If I um, bring up the octave oscillator here as well, and these are two are set at different um, uh, octaves. If I now give it some linear FM, immediately we've deviated from the same musical pitch, the same octave. Which can be quite an interesting musical tool, but if we apply FM here and uh, within pizza, not the linear FM that we have on the control. As I turn up the control, that deviation is going to lead to us losing our nice consonant sound, like instantly. So if we try and use the linear FM to do vibrato, we don't really get vibrato, we get a very different feel. That's linear FM. That's vibrato. That's not vibrato. But at lower amounts, it's kind of acting like a alternate um, kind of uh, detune. But if we start to sequence that. Because the frequency relationships are changing in, in unpredictable ways now. Don't sound so good. So, yeah, um, use the right uh, pitch FM for the right thing, is what I'm saying here. So, moving down to the next button, we have the ratio oscillator. And when this top light is flashing, what we are going to be um, affecting is which of the ratios are currently selected. So, if I just turn up my ratio oscillator there and I turn my control knob, that's going to be um, sequencing through those different um, selected ratios. And of course that can be pretty interesting if we apply uh, an LFO to it. So if I again give this some, uh, pitch sequence and take a tempo synced LFO. Give it some ratio oscillator. Mm -hmm. 
It's a pretty fun bloops and bloops we had there. Now, of course, the, whether this is going to be effective for a particular sequence is going to depend on the ratios that you've selected across here. So, you know, use it with some uh, thought potentially. The um, second thing that we get access to if we press it a second time is going to be exponential FM for the ratio ratio oscillator. So this is kind of an alternate way that we can retune our ratio oscillator. So if we want to offset the current ratio by some amount, we can now do that manually. On here, and we, again, we could sequence this as well if we wanted to. Um, so if we take our pitch sequence that we had, and instead plug it into our control. And we can kind of get it doing a straight up pitch sequence as well. which is an interesting way to approach things by trying to pitch sequence the modulator rather than the carrier. Fun. So um, let's move on to the octave. Um, basically, this is doing exactly the same thing as we had with our ratio. With one light flashing, we are going to have control over the octave select. Uh, for the octave oscillator, not for the whole um, uh, module in this case. And again, you know, just to give it another try if we... Tempo synced. We get some fun sort of variations on sequences that way. And then if we um, set this lights flashing that's going to give us exponential FM control over the octave oscillator which means that we don't have to have the octave oscillator set at an octave anymore so we can get all of those other FM relationships in there also for whatever reason when you set this up it naturally detunes the octave oscillator just a tiny bit and just makes it sound really rich and lovely so <laughs> that's nice isn't it so the next control setting um we don't actually we need to move away from these buttons because there are two other settings that we get by pressing both of them together so here with both top lights flashing what we get on the control knob then is basically this slider again so it gives us a second control for this slider so we can offset where that slider is we can add to it and so on so that means that if you want to send two different kind of LFO patterns into your um, uh, FM index to get kind of more complex LFO shapes happening we can send that one into the FM index and then send this one into the control and get more complex LFO shapes happening there or you could send uh, an LFO to one and a um, envelope to the other. So if you want to do LFO modulation and uh, an 
envelope kind of modulation and you don't have uh, a mixer in your rack or a mixer spare in your rack, you can do it that way. More exciting than this uh, is a feature that's been added in the 1.1 firmware. So if we press these both together again, and the bottom two are now flashing. What we have, rather than this control twice in series, uh, where one is offsetting the other, we now have them in parallel. Uh, and this is uh, where we can actually make use of pizza as a three operator synth now. If I just take away um, the modulation, because it's going to be as straightforward to hear it this way. So um, if I turn this one up into the octave range, and I turn this one up into the octave range, we kind of get that combined still. But if I turn this one down towards the ratio, we're now doing FM with both modulators in parallel, which allows us to get even more complex tones. And again, we could be doing uh, things like uh, sending two different um, uh, envelopes uh, going different ways, and sometimes they will interact with each other in interesting ways. Um, Sometimes they're interacting with each other, sometimes they're sort of living on their own, and you can get some really interesting uh, in between sounds in there. That's a really big plus for this version of the firmware, the fact that we now actually have uh, in Pizza a three operator FM synth essentially, rather than just a two. So coming down to the final button here, uh, when uh, the wave light is uh, flashing, that's going to give us access to the uh, the wave control, but on the control knob. Uh, and similarly, if we have fold flashing, we've got access to the fold control, and if ring is flashing, we've got access to ring. Um, so what this allows us to do essentially is um, control two different shape parameters at once. So if I want to have control over, um, say, uh, fold and ring at the same time, I can select fold to be controlled on the control knob, come out of control mode, and have ring selected. So that's doing ring, and now I have access to both of those modulation sources at once. modulate them together with uh, LFOs or whatever I want to do in order to get more complex sounds. So we're not actually done with this uh, button here. If we scroll through a uh, past ring, um, the two bottom lights light up and the observant among you would have noticed that indeed the module has gone silent. So why is that? So with these two bottom lights selected, what we have on the control now is a VCA. It's an inverting VCA actually, so you could do ring modulation externally with it. Um, but this means that we can use pizza as a complete voice without having to um, uh, use a downstream VCA to give it an envelope or anything. So for example, if I take a um, trigger coming here out of PAMS and I go into the gate input on a strip on stages 
take that output and bring it into the control input, we can now have a full voice without having to use a downstream VCA, which is really useful. And also, as uh, mentioned, because this is inverting, we can do um, real uh, ring modulation with it as well, using an external source. As well. Now, if I uh, press this uh, a final time, uh, all of the lights are going to light up and we're still not going to hear anything. So this final mode here with all of the lights lit up is kind of special um, because it's going to make use of the sync input. So what we have in this mode is uh, it's still kind of using its internal VCA but it's going to provide us with its own internal envelope as well. And this is new in version 1.1. So if I take my gate output of PAMS and bring it into sync here, we hear it start to click a little bit. And what the control uh, knob is going to do in this case is affect our envelope shape. So as we turn it up, we get a longer, attack decay envelope and going past the middle we get a, a longer attack on an attack decay envelope if we just slow down uh, what pams is doing here so this way the both the attack and the decay gets longer and this way you just get kind of like a straight attack to K sound. And we can modulate the shape of our um, envelope by modulating the control now. Now you may well want to uh, make use of an offset to do this so you don't go down to zero each time, but you get the idea that we can now get a full voice out of uh, Peter without needing a downstream VCA or um, for simple sounds at any rate, a um, uh, an envelope either. What's even more exciting about this mode is that the envelope is also sent to the um, FM uh, index, um, which um, means as long as you don't have anything patched into the FM index, uh, the envelope is also being sent to that point. So you don't even need to have an envelope to do your FM sound either. Obviously this works to invert it as well. That's cool. <laughs> So for like getting a basic FM bass out of pizza, you literally don't need to send anything but a sequence and uh, a gate into the sink. Which is a uh, very good news if you are dealing with a smaller setup and you don't always have envelopes and VCAs to spare. You can never have too many VCAs, and luckily, as it turns out, there's one inside pizza. Great news. And that, I believe, is all of the current control destinations in version 1.1. Given as we just used the sync input for a uh, non-standard use, let's talk about its standard use quickly. Um, if you're familiar with synths, you may be able to guess, uh, but the sync uh, input allows us to 
reset the phase of the oscillators uh, based upon another signal. So uh, maybe a common uh, use for this might be uh, to get that classic sync sound. So if I maybe plug in the triangle output from this VCO here, let's hear that. And if we turn up, uh, let's just start with the octave output on Peter. You can hear that I've tuned them pretty close to one another, but not quite totally snapped in tune. Uh, if I take another output from this VCO and plug it into the sync input on Peter, then indeed they will snap exactly in tune. And uh, what that means now is we can do that classic sync trick of modulating the pitch of pizza, the synchronized oscillator in this case, to get those classic sync sounds. So if we uh, maybe assign our control to uh, the exponential FM, that's probably the best one to do. And now if we modulate the, um, the pitch of pizza, which I'll just use the knob for that, we'll hear that classic sync sound. <laughs> And of course, different wave shapes are going to give us different kind of sounds. A uh, sawtoothy the wave is always good for sync sounds. As is a square wave, and that's on the octave oscillator where we've got those wave shapes. Uh, we can also get really interesting sounds with um, FM sync. Really aggressive stuff. Really cool, aggressive, vocal, you know, classic kind of sync sounds there. There is also a uh, nice sort of extra case for the sync control, and that's more to do with... Um, when you're building certain types of patches where you need a nice clean attack. So I'll just patch something off camera and uh, show you what I mean. So here I've just set up a really simple FM bass patch. Uh, so I'm triggering a gate from PAMS going into an envelope on stages. I'm using the internal VCA on pizza and I've just got some FM going on in there. So if I just start the um, clock going, what I want you to listen to is the very attack of the note. Now it's subtle, but you can probably hear the very attack of that note. There seems to be a click at the start that's fading in and out. It's inconsistent in terms of the attack of the note. Just have another listen. And the reason for this is that the phase of the oscillators at the start of each note is not in the same place each time. Sometimes it's going to be high, you're going to get a click at the start, sometimes it's going to be in the middle where you're going to get a clean start, or it's going to be negative and you're going to get a click uh, with the opposite polarity. So for um, bass sounds in particular, or plucky sounds in general, uh, this sort of relationship between the phase of the oscillator and the start of the note, especially on a digital synth, is going to be pretty uh, interesting. Now, if I take my gate signal from PAMS and take it up into a malt, and I will just patch it back into um, stages for our envelope, back down into here, still got the click. Now listen to the start of the note if I take that same gate signal and patch it into our sync input. That fading in and out click has disappeared. It's really consistent every single note now. So um, if you are interested in making sure that the start of your note, especially with a plucky sound, is absolutely dead on every single time, then the sync input just receiving the same um, trigger as your envelope um, is a really, really nice technique if you're not using it uh, to do sort of sync sounds, obviously. Very nice. The penultimate input that we need to talk about um, here is the external input. What this allows us to do is override the octave 
oscillator going into the positive side of our FM index. So for example, if I take uh, the triangle output of the 2HP here and plumb it in here, now it's this oscillator which is um, doing the FM on this side of the slider. And that gives us um, some interesting possibilities to, for example, um, find other relationships between oscillators without going through setting up ratios. But it also means that we could be um, sequencing the uh, VCO separately to pizza, which could get us all sorts of interesting harmonic and tyral options going. Sounds good. Um, another thing that you can do, of course, is plumb well, whatever you want into uh, that external input. And it allows you to um, kind of process it through FM and the other um, parts of pizza, for example, the uh, the wave folder. So um, here I've got, and I'll just grab a longer patch, we can just hear it on um, Beehive, which is uh, Platts. And we've just got this sort of particle noise thing going. Kind of like a reverbing uh, kind of uh, little pops and crackles of a vinyl record. Uh, and if we plumb this into pizza on the external side, just turn the amp back up. They become these little sort of like little drum hits almost because it's obviously modulating the phase of what's going on in there. You can hear that sort of throwing the uh, the pitch around a little bit. And then we can take that and then like use the wave folder. other sounds happening in there as well. So a whole range of interesting additional things we could do in there. We could even do things like um, plumbing samples in here. So this is just, uh, I don't know what this is a sample of, let's have a quick listen. Uh, it's just a reverby piano sample. Um, one of my standbys, and we can plumb that into the external input here. And that, with a little extra reverb, is real cool. And of course, we still have access to other ways of processing things. So an important thing to um, note here is that this only replaces the octave oscillator at this point. Um, if we want to do a ring modulation, the octave oscillator is still there, uh, as it is also on the output as well. So if we wave shape, you'll be able to hear it change. So you, you still got that octave oscillator output functioning as it was before. It's just literally at this point on the uh, FM index that we are replacing it. That's so cool with the uh, FMing it with with a sample. I want to beat to it now. Perhaps we'll do that in one of the demos. Ah, oh, yeah. Super cool. So the final input we need to talk about here is the volts per octave, which is what you use to set the tuning of the oscillators, what we would use to sequence the pitch. But it does actually have one extra little trick up its sleeve. Uh, let me grab an LFO and I'll go for an attenuator so it's not totally mad. And plumb that into the volts per octave. As you would expect, maybe you should now be hearing a... A big old vibrato. Uh, as you would uh, 
probably expect. However, um, one thing that we can do here is if we put uh, pizza into pitch calibration mode, so this is the mode you use to calibrate the false proxy, that's not what we're going to do here. I'll just unplug that for a second. Uh, so if we press and hold, uh, this goes into calibration mode. Uh, you can see here at the moment that our uh, shape lights are pulsing. If I tap this, they're going to go to a stepped animation instead. So if we come out of pitch calibration mode and we plumb our fault proxy back in, um, what we have now is a quantized input on our fault proxy, and it'll just quantize to um, a chromatic scale. So if you want to use a, for example, a random input into pizza, but you don't have a, a quantizer spare, uh, we can set it into quantized mode and we can just send random in there and you've got uh, pitches uh, that are even tempered. So I think now that is everything on pizza covered Let's actually apply that and build a few patches. So for this first patch, we've got um, pizza being set up to just do a FM bass voice with a lot of uh, variation going on, all on its own. Um, we're not using any downstream um, VCAs. I'm not even using any envelopes. I'm just sending um, mostly random information into um, the inputs to build this patch out. So let's break this patch down and talk about what's going on here. So turn down the kick drum here and we'll just listen to the main output here. And I'll just unpatch uh, this cable. And I'll just unpatch uh, this one as well. So um, what we have here is uh, just a pitch sequence going in to false proactive. And then I have a gate pattern going into the sync input and I have the control mode in the new um, envelope mode from version 1.1. And that's given us an envelope of the VCA and also of the index. If I don't patch anything into the FM index, then the internal uh, envelope goes there as well. Uh, so then I patched in uh, another random sequence into the control input. And that's going to then modulate uh, the control amount. And in the envelope mode, this is going to um, modulate the envelope shape. And that's why we're getting some more muted notes, some more um, uh, long held out notes. It might be interesting actually to uh, mult the, um, the pitch or an inverted version of the pitch sequence into here so that the high notes are sort of pluckier. That might be an interesting thing to do. Uh, and then um, I've got my shape mode set to ring mod and I've also got a slower slewed random source going in here which is um, pulling up the ring mod on some uh, sections, which is giving me that sort of grit and distortion. Then I have my octave output, and my octave oscillator is set to an octave down, so I can use that as a sub, which makes sure that the bottom end holds together, even when we have those sort of more modulated things going on there. And we combine that with a kick in. Cool. Um, I've also got my ratio um, set up here, and I haven't got my ratio um, uh, going into the FM. Actually, we'll see what it sounds like going the other way. Also cool. Oh, even cooler, perhaps. 
So I've got my ratio set quite a bit higher. I think it's like two octaves and a fifth up. So we've got that variation there as well. And if we wanted to, we could also um, turn up the, um, what's the pulse output here, but I've got it set to be my ratio oscillator. And we can set that out on the top there as well, which has got that kind of cool FM vibe as well. Yeah. So, uh, no VCAs, no filters, nothing downstream of Peter other than my mixer. Uh, just making use of the internal um, envelope and VCA. I'm not even having to use an envelope here. So you can set Peter up in this way, in the same way that you can with, say, um, plats or rings, where you don't really need to use any external um, uh, envelopes in order to get those envelope shapes. And it's quite neat. We can turn our envelope inside out as well when we turn the control negative. This might be cool if you um, actually malted the uh, octave out, put that into a more sort of plucky envelope uh, separately. <laughs> What we have here is pizza being set up basically to act uh, like a virtual analog VCO. And the signal flow that I've got set up here is kind of the standard um, subtractive synth uh, setup. You've got VCO going into a filter, going to VCA. We've got uh, an envelope which is coming from stages uh, to um, uh, control both the filter and the VCO at the same time. And that's just going through a tiny bit of reverb uh, and then out into the output. And then it's been sequenced by the SQ1, of course. In terms of what's going on, uh, with pizza so we have the oscillator uh, octave oscillator i should say output and the pulse output going into quadrat just to act as a mixer and the pulse here uh, so i've put pizza back into the mode where the pulse output is actually a square wave output rather than the alternate mode where it's giving us the ratio oscillator and then um what i've got going on then is um, I've got my uh, control input assigned to the exponential FM of the octave oscillator which allows me to tune that oscillator so I've just got it assigned on stages here and I can tune that oscillator so this is the octave oscillator that I'm tuning freely And then obviously I can change its octave range as well, like that. And that allows me to get um, detuned between the two of them, which is really, really nice. Um, so you can hear that everything's just slightly detuned, in case that, that nice, rich, dare I say, analog style sound. If we just open up the filter a bit more. Um, the pulse wave output is only going to give us the uh, pulse output, uh, which will sound like... Oops, the pulse output there uh, but you'll hear that I've got pulse width modulation going on there and that's because uh, on the pulse output the um, uh, FM index is going to do uh, the pulse width and I've got a little bit of an LFO coming in here if I turn down the index mod here just got a nice steady uh, square wave there but I can give it a little bit of LFO we get a bit of movement or we could go with a fast movement very nice and as I say on the other output we've got the octave output and we can tune its uh, octave there and I've got it uh, tunable on that slider there and of course on the octave output we also have the shape control 
which allows us to go between sore at one end through saw through sine rather across to square wave if we want that as an alternate we could also obviously modulate that if we wanted to and then we can blend them together and it sounds dare I say quite fat um, lovely low end in it and obviously you know, you've always got to um, bear in mind that the uh, total signal chain is going to be imparting things so the filter here is definitely overdriving it a little bit and giving us a little bit of uh, roundness and dirt that way uh, the VCA is pretty clean um, a tiny bit of reverb just for a bit of space but you know it's just there sort of subliminally but if you need a sort of VA kind of setup uh, in a particular patch pizza does you know honestly a really quite good job um, some of that sort of unsteadiness and the humanness that we had in the sort of basic setup with the sine waves comes through here the detuning sounds natural as it beats against itself so yeah I mean in a pinch why not So, my intention with this uh, slightly less conventional patch here is to <laughs> oh God, is to show off pizza in a slightly different light, and I've tried to create a kind of excuse me now uh, digital boucle kind of environment here. And the uh, interesting thing to note here is that none of the sounds that you're hearing here involve any FM at all. We're making use of the wave... <laughs> the wave folding and the uh, ring modulation to get all of these different timbres. There's no FM going on in here at all. So really what I was trying to show is what we can get done without making use of, <laughs> excuse me now, any FM at all. So there's a lot of random stuff happening over here, literally random, I'm not saying like just stuff that I've plugged in <laughs> randomly, but there's lots of random uh, generators going on here, both in terms of time and envelope length and all that kind of thing. So that's what's doing all of the sort of sequencing side of things. In terms of what we're actually hearing, we're just listening to the main output of pizza, which I'm running into um, two low pass gates, which are panned left and right, and they're being triggered by the envelopes over here. Um, those same envelopes are being used to um, modulate the wave folding, uh, which I've routed to the control input in this case, uh, so that I could do uh, ring modulation as well on the shape input. Um, what I actually found incidentally in this case is that I thought, uh, although I was trying to make a digital boucle kind of patch, that actually the digital wave folding just sounded a bit better in this patch for whatever reason, so that's what I went with. Um, yeah, and then those are panned uh, left and right in X-Pan, and I've malted those out into uh, MFX, which is just running a reverb, which I've brought up a little bit of over here. Now, of course, there's nothing to stop us from involving some um, FM as well, um, and things get pretty intense when we start to do that. Almost too intense. 
kind of a bit noisy and digital. Pretty cool though. And of course we could be, um, well, an electrical storm going on there. And of course we could also be uh, sequencing the FM index as well to add even more to the person. Probably wouldn't need too much of it. I think my ratio oscillator is set very, very slow, so it's almost bringing in a very fast vibrato. Just off down that side is pretty cool. Yeah, so um, until just then, we were doing no FM. It was all wave folding, rhythm modulation, and obviously a fairly unconventional use of the oscillator. But I wanted to show it in a slightly less <laughs> conventional light. So this patch, um, there's quite a lot going on, um, uh, but the only thing that you're hearing is pizza. Um, although I am running some filtered noise into the external input on it, actually. Uh, let's try and break down what we're hearing. So if I just turn that down for a second. So what we're hearing now is just the um, octave oscillator output. The um, pitch sequencing is coming from PAMS, but I'm mixing that pitch, pitch sequence in with a uh, little um, uh, envelope here so we're getting that sort of kick drum sound so if I turn that envelope down that's just uh, the octave output on its own I can just mix in the kick attack there um, yeah I'm just mixing them together here um, and uh, <laughs> The octave output is being wave shaped slightly, so it's slightly towards being a uh, square wave. Push it further if you want. Like that. Um, and that's basically what's going on with uh, that. We've uh, then got that going through one of my channels on XPan, and I'm just using that as a VCA as well as a panner and the envelope there. Uh, this other one, if I just unpatch this for a second, we'll be able to hear it. So this is the main output on pizza. And there's a bunch of stuff going on here, as you can probably guess. Um, so what's going on? Um, let's start with the FM bit here. So the FM here is all the way across to the external side here and I'm negatively modulating the index here if I adjust my uh, this one here I think yeah there we go so um, if I make that envelope that's modulating this a lot snappier then we're hearing that noise modulated FM there I mean kind of bounce it so the start of the sound has a bit of noise and then we have a sort of a bit of a twang on the FM side there as it swoops across into the ratio oscillator. The ratio oscillator, um, its um, uh, frequency has been modulated directly um, via the control input on the exponential uh, FM there. So I'm just sending a random sequence into uh, there which is giving us all of these different fm tones there i've started with one that's quite low tuned so we're getting all sorts of uh things going on there unpredictable but we've got that envelope that's kind of ground what's going on uh anything else to talk about on that one uh no so the output there again is going into a channel of x pan which i'm using both as a vca and i'm also panning it around with random voltage so if we put this back in to here. Get our kick back and bass line. Uh, 
Uh, and then all of this is going into MFX, which is just running a compressor module just to get a little more thwack out of the, the kick drum, uh, but not affecting it all that much. Um, yeah, uh, one other envelope. Uh, that's just the pitch envelope there. Yeah, so uh, quite a lot of modulation, but we're getting what sounds like kind of two different voices out there, or maybe even three if you count the panning. Um, uh, we're going to get the bass sound and kick drum and the um, sort of on top twinkly FM percussion. Uh, and yeah, that's all coming straight out of, out of pizza, apart from the, uh, the noise, of course. So in this patch, I'm using Peter as a kind of a distortion processor. So we've got this break here, and I'm molting that up here so we can hear it dry, and then it's going into Peter on the external uh, input. So it means that it is going to be phase modulating Peter, but rather than being a tonal thing, it's a drum loop. So let's uh, turn that up. So obviously, <laughs> this is under quite heavy uh, modulation at the moment. But let's um, take all of that away and actually hear uh, what we have got. So if we put the FM index in the middle, we're just hearing pizza being pizza. It's tuned down really low. Um, but uh, because we have the break coming into the external input, as I turn up the FM index, we start phase modulating pizza with the drum loop, which has a really gnarly sound. Really cool. Uh, what I've also got here on the index mod um, is I've just got a rhythmic envelope coming in. So we can use that as kind of like a uh, a VCA, VCA into our FM distortion kind of thing going on. So I'm using it to kind of get this uh, threes against two kind of feel. Um, but once we've got anything happening at this end, any of the later processing, so the shape uh, in particular, is going to turn up um, and affect the drum loop as well. So I've got my, sl my shape slider set to waveform. If we turn it up. There's some really cool time on that to be had. Just down there at the bottom where it just sort of brings up that second harmonic on the snare is really cool. Mix that back in. The Buchler style folding. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then on the uh, control knob, um, I've got uh, that set to the ring modulator, so I've got ring modulating and folding on. If I just unplug the, um, the modulation there, we can absolutely mangle it with the octave ring mod. And obviously tuning pizza to kind of match the fundamental of the kick drum might be really cool just to fine tune it. It's not far off now, I don't think. And then if I go the other way, I've got the ratio oscillator, which is quite a lot higher. Um, and then what I've got here in terms of my modulation is I've got a stepped random for the ring mod, so it's going to ping backwards and forwards between the two different. It's 
almost like a, an octave kind of melody line there. Uh, here I've got the uh, stepped random for the shape, so get some of that. That way folding in, which is again going to give us those octaves as it does the digital folding. And then I've got that um, rhythmic thing happening here. And mix that back in with the dry sound. And then just for funsies, I've also got the octave output just on the mixer as well, just if you want to add in that rumble. Such a cool way to use it. Really filthy, filthy sounds. Everything sort of rhythmically integrated, all being excited with the drum loop. Yes. So in this patch you're not actually hearing pizza. What you're hearing right now is the 2HP VCO going into one side of the ADAC uh, dual filter, a little bit of stereo slapback and out into the output. What pizza's doing in this patch is it's acting as an LFO which is what's wobbing around our filter. And you can hear that we're getting quite a complex interesting LFO shape. It's periodic but it's certainly not just a, uh, a triangle wave, right? So the way I'm doing this is, um, in my Volt Per Octave, I've got some negative CV, and that's allowing me to bring the uh, frequency of pizza down below audio rate. It will be uh, below audio rate if you turn the octave all the way down in a lot of cases, but not probably low enough for most LFO um, uses. So I've got some negative CV going in there to bring it right the way down. Now, Normally when we apply the FM index to uh, an audio rate uh, version of pizza, we introduce those harmonics, those sidebands. What we're ultimately doing is making the wave shape more complex. And that's exactly what's happening when we're using it as an LFO. By applying FM index, we are changing the shape of our LFO and introducing these interesting new shapes. And of course, it's going to matter um, like it does with um, uh, audio rates stuff and watch uh, the ratio between our carrier and our modulator is. So if I bring my um, FM index into the center we'll get something that's more just being a sine wave and if I bring it across to the octave oscillator we're going to get a different shape again. More predictable than what we had with our more complex ratio oscillator, but certainly an interesting sound. Um, if we come back over to the ratio oscillator, and choosing different uh, ratios that I've got set up here are going to give us different shapes as well. <laughs> That's really cool, that one. Um, <laughs> awesome. 
Oh yeah. Wah, wah, warm, warm. <laughs> uh, that one's much faster. So we're actually starting to audio rate modulate our um, carrier there. Now, on top of this, of course, if we um, change the wave shape of our um, modulators by moving the shape around, we'll get again really. Different sounds. Awesome trills in there. Go okay, the other way. And on the control knob here, I've got it set up to do the wave folding. So uh, again, this is going to uh, change our, our shape drastically as well. Make it faster generally as we fold the LFO in on itself. The interesting thing here though is that on top of our main output, of course we do also have our octave oscillator output and I've got my pulse here set to be my ratio oscillator. So we can bring these in as, as well, so this should be the ratio one. And because the ratio oscillator is what is responsible for changing the frequency of my main output, it's going to be um, related in terms of its uh, tempo, if you like, to what's going on on the other side. And I've also got my um, uh, my octave oscillator here on this one here, uh, which again is going to be somewhat related because it's going to be a division of what's going on on the carrier. So we've got these complex interactions, but because the uh, ratio and the octave oscillator are related in terms of their frequency to the carrier, they're all going to kind of interact with each other in interesting ways. So I'm going to um, put a pitch uh, sequence into the VCO here. And obviously because we've got this sort of complex LFO movement going on here, things are going to sort of walk over it, but we shouldn't forget that pizza has a sync input. And the sync input usually is used to uh, you know, bring the start of our notes together or to do those kind of sync sounds. But when we think about it in an LFO rate, we can also apply an LFO rate sync signal. So on uh, this output here, I have a clock which is going every 16 beats. And if we plug this in here, it's going to phase reset our LFOs every 16 beats, which is going to give us some consistency in the way that our LFOs are moving. And as I say, repetition legitimizes, and as you hear that same shape going back around again and again, we start to get used to that complex shape. And even if we start applying can you hear how it's always putting it kind of back in time or although those that timing is kind of polyrhythmic because it's resetting every 16 beats we're still sort of feeling the rhythm in there and of course we could change the division here if we wanted to have more often so we can create these really complex <laughs> 
really complex wave shapes with our LFOs here, but still have them sort of musically work as we bring them kind of back into sync by throwing a signal into the sync there. And actually, Peter makes for a really, really interesting modulation source because of this kind of musically related but complex wave shape. Um, and it's not what you'd maybe buy for for its main job, but if you've got quite a few voices going on inside your um, rack, you can make for a really interesting modulation source. I'll certainly be giving it a go in this guise because I don't really have anything else that could create these sorts of patterns. Yeah, it's an awesome kind of <laughs> offbeat skank to that one. Yeah. Here we go. Pizza turns out really cool LFO. This whimsical bleepy bloopy patch um, that we've got here, um, what you're hearing is a combination of the main output and the octave output of pizza being mixed together going through a low pass gate and into uh, some delay for little bit of stereo movement. In terms of what the octave oscillator sounds like, well, it's just um, uh, set as a sub octave, so it's at the minus one position here on the switch. And uh, I've come onto the wave shape here, and I've just put it not quite all the way to uh, square wave, but just give it a little bit of hair. And it just sounds like a nice oscillator sound going through a low pass gate, I guess, which is always a wonderful thing. So that's basically giving us some sort of uh, weight and sort of consistency at the bottom end. If we listen to the main output, that's where all of the movement is happening. And there's kind of two things um, that I'm taking advantage of here. Um, uh, I guess the main thing, actually if I just turn this down for a second, uh, that will disappear. So the main thing that's going on here really is that the external input here, which is replacing the octave oscillator on the FM side of things, is coming from the 2HP PCO here, just the triangle output. And what I'm doing is I'm sequencing uh, the pitch of the 2HP separately to the pizza, but they are tuned together to begin with, and the sequence that I've picked for them are both sort of within the same scale. Uh, and I'm sticking with like really simple scales. I think it's just pentatonic and maybe even just octaves and fifths coming into the VCO. And what that means is that although the um, relationship between the two oscillators keeps moving, um, we are still getting stuff that mostly makes sense. So we're not getting to any sort of really, really um, atonal places. There are a couple of places where it's a little bit more atonal than others, but nothing too um, offensive. The uh, second thing that I'm taking advantage of, and maybe if I just turn down this for a second and turn this back to where it was, is um, that I have um, set up the control input, which has just been controlled with a envelope coming from stages here, to um, be in the uh, FM index mixer mode, which means that I have access to both um, the ratio oscillator when I turn it this way, and my external input when I turn this up this way. So sometimes we're getting just the 2HP, sometimes we're getting just the ratio uh, oscillator built into Peter, and sometimes we get in both, which is where we get that sort of noisy block of sound. Almost a percussive noise going on in there. So we get a whole range of different timbres going in there, a lot of different interests happening. Um, and uh, 
pizzas do most of the work except for obviously I am sending in uh, an oscillator in there and just adding that, that low end back in just holds everything together and just balancing the um, the index mods here until I get something that works well and maybe balancing our envelope shapes we got something with a lot of movement in there but it never gets truly out of control Earlier in the video, I waxed lyrical about the quality of the sine wave on the pizza, and it is maybe a little weird to get all misty-eyed about the quality of a sine wave sound, but I do really like the sine wave that comes out of pizza, and so I wanted to make sure that I had represented that in a, a patch, which is what this is aiming to do. So I'll just strip away everything that isn't uh, coming directly from pizza. So I'll just go to the reverb and the drone which is coming from rings there. And what we're left with is just um, pizza being sequenced and its output, the um, octave output going to a bunch um, of one, two, three, four uh, low pass gates which are just being pinged open by PAMs over here. So although the sound is sort of pinging left and right, we are only hearing one output from Pete's here and that's just the octave output. So we're just hearing the um, sine wave output because the shape knob is currently set um, in the middle. And it's lovely and weighty at the bottom end. At the top, it's just got a little humanity to it. There's a little bit of crackle and movement inside there. It's not a perfect sign, um, but that's what makes it so lovely. And when we give it a little bit of reverb, and get some of the outer low pass gates to open up a few more times a kind of fake delay. This is just done incidentally by um, using the logic on PAMS. Um, there's a sort of a master clock and then all of the things which are opening up the low pass gates are set as a logic and with the master clock. And then I've got various uh, either Euclidean or, or random rhythms in there. And uh, this is uh, increasing the width of the gate pattern on the master clock, which means that more of the pulses get let through because of the AND logic. It's a nice way of getting uh, variations that sort of fill things out quite naturally. And um, I have actually got the control input um, plugged in here and it's set to control the wave shape just on a long um, LFO from stages. So if you did want to move away from those sine waves and get a little bit more timbre move it, movement going on inside Pete, so we can just open this up a little bit. And then as the LFO sweeps across, we'll get some sort of partial saws where the sine wave has just been slanted and some partial square waves where the tops of the sine wave have been uh, sort of shaved off. Some more brightness in the sound at, at times. And then to complete the patch I've just added a drone from uh, rings because you gotta sometimes. If only I had clouds in this rock to really uh, 
complete things. Just opening up that shape a little bit more so we can a few more obvious sort of soft saw waves. FM is one of my favourite places to do drones. So in this patch, uh, we've got Pizza just droning away while I gets crunchy while I uh, modulate a bunch of stuff. So um, what's been modulated? Just slow, random modulation, mostly coming from stages. Um, we have the uh, detune is coming in on the control input which means that that sort of movement and beating in the patch is constantly moving around sort of revealing almost rhythms within the uh, sound uh, we've also got the fm index being uh, modulated and that's been pushed towards um, just the ratio oscillator which is tuned a fifth above so it's kind of fairly consonant but a little bit more movement than you would get with uh, an octave and of course it's being detuned as well which gives you some other things going on in there as well um, I'm also modulating the shape uh, which is set to ring mod uh, in this case and uh, for the ring mod uh, I'm pushing it only towards the octave oscillator which is set um, an octave below uh, and that's bringing in that sort of rumbly grumbly uh, almost sort of distortion in places I'm actually using all of the outputs um, coming out of uh, Pizza. The um, pulse output is set to the, the ratio oscillator rather than the pulse wave. Um, because I'm not doing any um, wave shaping, I'm actually taking the um, ratio and the octave outputs and I'm bringing them into Tercy Arena just to give them a little bit of grit and sort of uh, uh, take the uh, the top of the waveform just to give it a little bit more harmonic content. Uh, the uh, main output is just coming straight out. Uh, that's all being brought together inside X-Pan and I'm just gently panning the octave uh, output around a little bit as well to give it a little bit of extra stereo movement. That's all then being brought in to dual filter here from ADAC uh, which is taking some of the top end off but I am modulating that filter uh, cut off as well just to give it a bit more movement there which allows us to have some darker moments and then some more aggressive brighter moments. Uh, the output of x pan is also being molted into MFX here which is giving us some reverb because you got it right and that's all just being mixed together on the output and we get this sort of quite ominous evolving drone and sometimes you can kind of hear that fifth above more obviously and you kind of get a chord happening in there and other times it's just right 